I think a, a good place to start maybe, Ralph, is what should we take from Triton? What is important about it? What should the community think about it? Oh, I think we could talk an hour about that. So first, uh, one of the most significant positive things is uh, the fact that Schneider actually went public here on stage at S4. And, and yeah. especially, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and I think especially the, the young folks among you, they, they have no idea what this means because when you think back, 2010, when Stuxnet uh, made the news. The first conference um, where Stuxnet was discussed was WiseCon 2010. And just in case you didn't know, Siemens presented at that conference, and everybody was expecting that they would talk about Stuxnet. Instead, so they did not. Instead, they gave uh, kind of like a sales pitch on their latest uh, IC, uh, DCS product for the electric sector. And, and then later, when, uh, when I said, no, this is a targeted attack against the Iranian nuclear program, and the media hit on, on Siemens, well, can you tell us about that? What, what about Iran? And Siemens's reaction was always like, Iran? Where is Iran? Uh, you know, that, that country there in the Middle East. Uh, we, we don't do any business with Iran. And the full disclosure was that uh, Siemens used to do business in Iran for more than 100 years, but they had just a couple of weeks before uh, Stuxnet made the news discontinued uh, this business due to the trade sanctions uh, because of the nuclear program. So just to give you some context and um, uh, what that means for the industry at large. I think this is a, a very big progress. And by the way, I, I just didn't want to break Siemens's balls. I, I just I think it is worthwhile pointing out that it's, it, the, the better strategy is to come forward and, and look what the reaction is from the community. They get applauded. Maybe Siemens at, at the time was thinking, oh, no, they, they will rip us apart. No, because I mean, we, are, we are adults. We are, have already learned that these products are vulnerable, uh, but we want to fix the problems. We want to know about the problems and fix the problems. So that is a, a major improvement. <coughs> and, um, but since, uh, so let's not get too positive about Schneider. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the one thing, I have one, um, one problem with their assessment, a little problem. So uh, w when you tell me the attackers had um, unlimited skills and unlimited time, I would disagree with that because obviously OPSEC was none of their skills. Uh, so the, the one thing that I have a hard time understanding is if you try to attack a safety system, and just to give you some context here, uh, because I realized that on Twitter this is, was not correctly understood, a safety system's purpose is to prevent health hazards, okay? Whereas a protection system is, uh, uh, the purpose of a protection system is to prevent equipment damage. So if you are attacking a safety system, the purpose is um, to kill people or to um, accept health um, uh, or injuries. <coughs> and um, if that's what you intend to do, and then I see you experimenting on target, I mean, what are you thinking? Like, so, in, in my uh, assessment, these guys really don't have their act together. If you want to hit hard, then you better get your act together in your lab. Obviously, they, they do have a lab. And so, I would um, rate them like as uh, like a, a D plus in, in that respect. Um, and remember, I, wh whoever did that, I, I didn't say that. Right, so if you're going to go hack anybody here at this panel, it will not be me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, uh, I think the, the unlimited uh, resources and skills, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, there are other things that, uh, that I find uh, very important for, for the big picture, for the framing, especially the ones um, that are left out. So there are two important pieces of information that are left out, as, as you have heard. Um, there is no dropper. We, we don't see any uh, logic for uh, communication with some kind of C2 architecture, for example. So that leaves the question open, how did uh, the attacker get on that legitimate engineering station? Uh, by the way, legitimate engineering station, don't, don't we know that? 
uh, there was the other stack, uh, attack called Stuxnet, and, and uh, I used to make a big point of, you know, engineering stations are like your crown jewels. They, they must be uh, the, the, the best protected systems in your whole plant, and, and certainly especially for a safety system. So, so I, I, I know from what I've heard that there's lots that we still don't know, and it may well be something to talk about next year, because um, I think there's going to be a lot done, a lot written, um, about uh, about uh, Triton, Trisis, you know, Hat Man in the coming years, and, and we'll know more about per perspective. Um, and so, yeah, so, you know, how, how was that uh, um, engineering workstation protected? How did they get on there? You know, what were the purposes? We will find a lot of that out. But I think that, you know, we all have been talking about the difficulty of, uh, of securing legacy infrastructures, and, and for a 16-year-old piece of gear, it was, you know, almost relatively new, if we look at the bell curve of, <laughs> uh, of system life cycles. Um, and so, you know, so I know that, you know, and, and Vences Schneider um, have been, you know, here in this community for a long time. Um, they lean forward uh, with security, and that's one reason why they were here, you know, presenting yeah. as, as yeah. part of the team. Um, but, but even, you know, they have, you know, problems going back into that legacy uh, 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 infrastructure, that their legacy uh, deployments. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we all have to look at. I know Anqui uh, from, from Red Balloon talked yeah. about some different yeah. ways of, of bringing those levels of protection out farther. And I've always been, as you guys know, um, you know, as concerned about future architectures as I am about um, the protection of legacy infrastructures. And so yeah. this, this brings to, to mind some of those things. But also I think that, that, that this is just um, one of a series of, uh, of impactful events in the last several years, whether it's uh, attacks in Ukraine over a couple of years, uh, the nuclear 13 or palmetto fusion, mm -hmm. um, and now attacks on, on safety systems um, that, um, you know, we're not uh, all uh, voices crying in the wilderness to our, our C-suites um, who used to say, well, you know, how do we protect these things? There have been no attacks. Why would anyone attack X? Um, and, and now we're getting both more government um, uh, in, uh, scrutiny uh, or expectations on, on us all to start, um, but also, you know, more need for resources and, and people are, are kind of backing us up more now. So we have to you know, step to the plate again and start coming up with these, uh, these new areas. Um, but uh, once again, so I'm, you know, I'm obviously a big fan of S4. I think the community that has been developed over the 11 years here, um, you, know, you know, people know who to call. We were up here on stage with, with, with three different companies, uh, all who had a part, who also referenced other folks who, who had uh, parts. Um, it, it points to a, a broader community than we had before. It may point to, um, you know, a, a lack of central leadership in response in some areas, um, but that's something that we still uh, can work out. So I think nobody would um, would uh, nail Schneider against the wall because uh, that 16-year-old uh, control system was uh, not cyber secure. I think that what you would just expect, and uh, just given the the breadth of of of, of the products that that you see in <coughs> such a large uh, company, then certainly you cannot secure everything at once, and it might well take 20 years. So and and this gets me back to my point. Um, uh, there are some questions I would have in respect to the asset owner. Um, so how was the infiltration done? Um, uh, unfortunately, we, we still don't know that yet, but I think Belek Johnson hinted on Twitter that they might disclose details about that in the near future. That would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, could, could turn out, I'm just speculating here, that uh, it was an inside job. Uh, so I'm just putting it out here as a wild speculation, could it be some latter-day um, Marucci Shire thing? Oh, like? you said Marucci Shire. Uh, I did, a, I did. We've had an uh, eight-year-old rule here. Was it the, <laughs> youngsters, the youngsters don't know that either. Um, so uh, could that be a latter-day VTech Bowden? I don't know. And, uh, but but uh, here is my point. This is not so difficult to figure out. So hopefully we'll, we'll find out uh, soon. And this will shed a completely different light on, on what the attack means. And, and we haven't figured that out, and therefore I think it's, it's a bit too early to uh, um, cry wolf and, and let all the dogs in the media lose, uh, zero day, nation state, blah, blah, blah. I think we don't know yet. The other uh, missing piece is the, the missing cyber-physical payload. Um, that is something that also um, I, f I find a little bit puzzling because it wouldn't be a big mystery you don't need to uh, in infiltrate any, let's just say, Iranian, North Korean networks in order to find that payload. You just need to go to that safety controller and follow the wire. Th then you would know what the payload could be designed to do. So 
maybe for the, for the IT folks in this audience, a safety controller always has a very limited purpose, unlike a basic production controller. So a safety controller is manip manipulating a very few set of actuators. And you would be able to understand any potential attack against such a safety controller by just looking at the physical side of that cyber physical system. So see what the, which part of the process is safeguarded by that controller, see the actuators that are attached to that controller, and then you had a pretty good idea what the payload could be designed to do. Because in a, a general purpose, generic attack against a safety controller does not make any sense. Uh, because they are so specialized, etc. The, the only general purpose attack against the safety controller would be denial of service. That would be the, the low-hanging fruit. But, but I, I want to warn you right now, because I remember, I remember back in this thing called Stuxnet, right? You may, oh, you yes, may have heard of it, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that <laughs> there were, and, and I'm, I have a point to make here at some point, um, there were a lot of people who came out early um, you know, with, uh, with some conjecture, with some incomplete analysis, yeah. with some other things, and it so happened that you know, that, that someone named Ralph Langner came out with what ended up being the kind of definitive, you know, um, you know picture of Stuxnet yeah. for the industry and 60 Minutes and other things followed. And I was telling someone, um, you know, today, I wonder who will emerge as, um, you know, the, the person next year who, yeah. when the dust settles, you know, had the, the best look initially and then was turned to, uh, yeah. you know, as the one who was right. Um, and will be the face of, of this particular vulnerability. Um, and once again, we don't even know if there was or was not impact for certain, right? So, so Stuxnet, we eventually determined, you know, oh, it wasn't just uh, this, this random you know, piece of something, and then we found out what it was doing. Like I said, I, I'm not ready to say what, you know, what, it, what it may or may not have been doing, but yeah. there, there might be a new Ralph Langner, so watch out. Someone's going to be coming down yeah. to take that chair. Not this chair. M maybe <laughs> I, should, I, I should do it again. <laughs> Sorry. But now, now you see why I like these guys on the closing panel, because by day three, I'm kind of tired, and I can just throw out a sentence, and, and, and 20 yeah. minutes later, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say okay, something just, again. Just shut up, Dave. Shut yeah, up, Dave. Yeah, exactly. so, 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 let's, so let's follow that thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, my, my point is, and, and this actually uh, relates to the Stuxnet analysis, once that you have the physical side of, of that attack, everything gets clear. Okay, mm -hmm. and that is if if you reread to kill a centrifuge, the the major breakthroughs came when we had video footage from uh, from Natanz, and I, th I think the same thing would happen here. I don't expect it to happen, but I'm just saying uh, if the uh, companies in question, or if the asset owner would share details of, of the attacked installation, it would be pretty, pretty clear. Okay, let, let's just move on a little bit. The other thing why I have difficulties um, putting uh, or hanging this attack very high, I say it is significant, it's, so it's a game changer, I, I would say that. Also, um, uh, you, you remember my talk from uh, Tuesday, I don't think it, it's going to change the landscape in, in the sense of a wake-up call, etc. so people will fall back to sleep again. Uh, that won't happen, but it's a game changer because of that safety system. But uh, I wouldn't hang it too high, since uh, uh, we ne also should put into perspective the effort that would have been required to block this attack or to mitigate this vulnerability. How about a simple whitelisting solution on the en engineering station? How about that? Um, how about even some, some basic stuff like uh, file integrity monitoring software? Would have blocked the attack, right? So um, I think this is something that we need to consider when, when we assess the, uh, uh, the advancedness of any attack. That is, the, the level that would have been required, the effort that would have been required to, to make this attack impossible. And, and, and again, so uh, maybe it's, it's a little bit too early to speculate about nation state. I wouldn't rule out uh, state sponsored. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if, if it, at, the, at the end of the day we see another Iranian hacker group like the Flaming Sword of Justice yeah. or well, whatever. I don't know. These hacking for booze guys are pretty good. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, that's, you know, they could have just sat that. down on a weekend yeah, yeah. and, like, you know, said, you yeah. know, like, what yeah. can we do? Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe <laughs> so just so ask a question, Dale. Okay. You need to go. Well, and <laughs> I just wanted to say one thing about Triton is, is as I hear you guys talking about this and I hear 16-year-old controllers, what I keep waiting for and I just never hear is someone saying, and maybe we should be looking at replacing 
16-year controllers and critical systems. I, right. I know you guys are not against that, but right, yeah. So, but you know, we should be actually putting that in front of our executives as as something to at least consider as an option. Mm -hmm. um, but